Hi, I'm Kees van Dok with TomTom and this is the Service Design Show. I'm Mark Fontaine and in this special episode of the Service Design Show, we're going to give you a taste of what to expect at the upcoming Service Design Conference that is taking place in Amsterdam on October 27th and 28th of 2016. My guest in this episode is Kees van Dok. Kees is the head of design at TomTom, Tom, but he's also a little bit of a development nerd. Let's jump right in and ask Kees to give us a preview of his upcoming talk. Welcome to the show, Kees. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, great. Uh, it's nice to have you on the show. And uh, my very first que question to you is, uh, let's jump right in and can you give us a 30 second pitch of your upcoming talk for our conference? Okay, uh, so my, uh, the theme for my talk um, will be about uh, designing uh, hardware products. Hardware products in today's kind of mobile centric uh, digital reality. Um, I, I, I've not I'm not really sure about the title of the talk yet, but it will be something along the lines of uh, maybe software is not so simple, but hardware is really, really hard. Uh, or in other words, I want to talk about how difficult it is to create uh, meaningful but differentiating hardware consumer electronics that work well with people's uh, digital uh, connected lives. And I'm going to talk about how a strong customer focus rather than a technology focus uh, helps us as TomTom Tom being successful in that uh, in that space. So, the, of course, uh, services are strongly tied to, to digital and to software, and your talk will focus more on hardware, on the hardware aspect. Exactly, because most most uh, service design and service services are usually mobile apps, uh, webs, uh, backend system, and their interaction between them. And um, obviously, many hardware products have become um, or have been sent into oblivion because of uh, the rise of the of the smartphone and the mobile phone. Uh, but for us, as a consumer electronics uh, product company, it's actually essential to find uh, opportunities to work within that ecosystem and to find hardware products, tools for people that actually um, uh, extend your lives, take away or take out uh, hurdles and uh, and obstacles and provide kind of meaning, additional value to that uh, dominantly digital ecosystem. Mm. And, I, and I can imagine that this is a super relevant topic as uh, the interfaces to hardware are changing so much these days. You know, take the Amazon Ella, uh, Eco, for instance, and all these kind of things that designing into intuitive hardware becomes really interesting. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's um, but it's it's uh, at the same time it's um, it's very difficult as well. So, um, so on the one hand, indeed, like uh, upcoming interfaces like uh, voice recognition, uh, speech support, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality pose a whole new kind of world and ecosystems where designers are only kind of scratching the surface of at the moment of what those interfaces could mean and how you could really leverage them to create meaningful um, customer, customer experiences. But in our daily reality, we're not there yet. Really, we, we kind of look at, um, at uh, products like, uh, like wearables, um, um, outdoor consumer electronics, uh, that also fit that same, uh, that same purpose still, to improve upon what's out there, to make products that have uh, less hurdles and less obstacles to use than some of the products that we find around us. And learning where those opportunities for improvement are is uh, is essential for our kind of business, because so, as you know, consumer yeah. electronics, consumer electronics is like swimming with the sharks. It's a, it's a highly competitive space. There are uh, there are uh, many competitors out there. It's a fast-paced uh, environment where you have to really yeah, be agile and be on your toes in order to uh, to survive. And that can only happen by really really understanding uh, the customer very well understanding what their needs are, um, you know, where they, uh, where they find um, issues and problems with existing products and how you can improve upon that. So um, I can relate strongly to this topic and I'm really curious, what will people learn and, and know after seeing your presentation? Um, well, I hope they, uh, what they take away is that, um, um, that design thinking 
And uh, relentless, if not uh, obsessive, customer focus is uh, quite essential for staying alive in the aggressive competitive space of consumer electronics. That's for one. Uh, but also that making better tools for people uh, is often a matter of simply removing friction and hurdles from today's uh, solutions. It's not always that you have to think very revolutionary. Most improved products really come from what it already says, improvement. Um, in addition, I hope that uh, people take away that uh, design-led uh, product envisioning, envisioning and concept creation is a very important factor in uh, aligning the various disciplines at larger companies like ours. Uh, we, we run like a, a plus 4,000 people uh, organization. And in order to make sure that people are aligned and work towards a common goal, uh, design has a very important role to play there because before any product is being realized or before any product is, is understood by the organization, we can bring it to life and we can uh, inform other parts of the organization of what a, a potential product experience could, uh, could, uh, could become. And I think that is a very, very powerful angle that designers have that is not always broadly understood. Uh, um, and last million, million questions that popped to my mind uh, uh, about this team, but uh, well, I'll, I'll wait for for your talk. Uh, case, that's, that's good. And yeah, my, yeah. my last yeah. point actually is also that there's uh, there's uh, there's hope and there's opportunity for device makers in Europe, and I think for the uh, the, the Europeans that attend the uh, the conference, that's uh, that's quite a positive and upbeat message. Uh, consumer electronics is not only a play for the Asian and the U.S. part of the of the world. There is a, there is a, we have a fighting chance as European, and uh, we got the creativity and know how to claim our space. Is that also your motivation uh, for addressing this team, bringing hope? Um, it's one of them, but I, th I think my main motivation is that I think um, that hardware opportunities are underestimated. Like I think many brands that are active in the app, web, backend space um, kind of underestimate the, 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 um, the, the, the power of a uh, physical component uh, to, your, to your product and your brand experiences. When you can include a tangible aspect to your customer experiences that you can feel, that you can smell and that you can hold, that makes a significant potential difference in, uh, in long-term customer, customer loyalty. Right, but I, I, I guess software, well, like you said in the early beginning, is is easier, and hardware is 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 hard. But maybe that's changing with the whole IoT stuff coming up. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, technologies like uh, like three D printing, um, um, electronics platforms, like the the core, the socks of uh, of devices becoming much more ubiquitous. Uh, the rise of uh, like cheap uh, hardware platforms that can be easily embedded in uh, in a range of products uh, absolutely has lowered the threshold to uh, to make stuff and to and to the make stuff. Designers should be challenged to do that to to use those abilities. Absolutely, and I think it's a bit of a lost craft yeah. that um, that that uh, that part of our design industry, and as, as as I said, like tinkering with hardware and creating uh, creating a tangible aspect of your products is uh, is is an important message. So uh, I, I'm sure you will uh, give us a lot of insights, but I'm also sure you have some big questions around this topic too. What are the questions that keep you awake? One the question, maybe. Yeah, it's basically what we talked about uh, briefly before. I'm, I'm very curious to see how customers' experiences are going to evolve in a world where uh, voice and speech and uh, augmented reality become the new in and output. So basically where, where screen services are disappearing and where interaction is getting much closer, if not a part of your body. Uh, and I think we're only starting to scratch the surface of how to properly design for such uh, such a new world. And I hope this uh, this event will uh, will help me learn a bit better from uh, from other people's experience there. Cool. Um, Case final question. Look, uh, the the conference is coming up. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'm mostly looking forward to uh, external views. If you uh, if you work in a uh, a company like uh, like TomTom. Um, and any larger company for that matter, you always tend to get a bit uh, myopic and uh, inward focused. And um, 
you run the risk of uh, you know of not being outside enough and not seeing uh, enough of the uh, of external developments. We uh, we try a lot by staying engaged with uh, the startup community and, and obviously having our research tangles in, in user research, in technology research, in marketing research. Uh, but having worked also in design consultancy, I know there is such great value in working with different company cultures and, uh, and getting the view of people from those other cultures. And I think that is the primary benefit of any networked event. And that's, that's, that's one I'm especially looking forward for here. So uh, I'd, I'd encourage people to, to grab you by the, by the coat. I, I'm not sure if that's an English saying, but uh, start a talk with Kees. That, that would be the message. I think everyone understands what you mean with that. <laughs> so Kees, that, that was all we have time for, actually. Thanks. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to your talk and uh, see you at the conference. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me and uh, all the best in, uh, in the final preparation. If you enjoyed this talk and like to see more interviews with service design pioneers, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the past episodes. If you want to learn more about the conference, check out www.service-design-conference.com. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.